Hi everyone, welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and my guest today is Mickey Papagna. He is the co-owner co of the counterculture retail store on Main Street, The Void, which carries a selection of things focusing on skateboards and also body piercing on site. Soon they're also going to be doing cosmetic tattooing. And so today we welcome Mickey. Hi, Mickey. How are you? I'm so glad you're on the show. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. And congratulations on your new, your new place on Main Street. Thank you. A bigger and better store. Definitely. Yeah, great. Yeah. I'd like to know, first of all, when you were a kid, um, what were the kinds of things you were interested in? Where'd you grow up? Um, so I'm from Connecticut originally. Mm -hmm. um, and my interests growing up were pretty vast. I mean, I was involved with sports, um, skateboarding, snowboarding. Um, art, music, all the pretty much everything mm -hmm. that I could get my hands on, mm -hmm. I tried at least, you know. Yeah. You didn't get bored? Never, no. <laughs> yeah. And you took up music? You focused a bit on yeah. music at a certain point? Yeah, I started playing drums when I was about 12, I want to say, uh -huh. 11 or 12, maybe younger. Yeah. Um, and the rest is history pretty <laughs> much from there. <laughs> And when you got a little bit older, were you working with rock shows? Were you doing working with touring? Yeah, with bands? Um, I've toured quite a bit over the years, mm -hmm. not as extensively as some people I know, but um, I've been lucky enough to travel the country. Um, nice. I've done multiple like longer tours, I guess, like ten days, six days, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had a band that went to Europe for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I unfortunately couldn't go because I was working at the time. You were really in that culture of, yeah. of music and staying up late at night. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and going to, to all, so did you do, were you part of the producing of the shows or were you also playing? Um, mainly playing. Mm -hmm. um, I was involved with a venue in Connecticut for a while. I would help them just set up Mm -hmm. shows and you know make sure that everything ran smoothly mm -hmm. I would help do door stuff um, yeah. and I've you know like I said I've been lucky enough that I've been acquainted with enough people that have done it for long mm -hmm. that they kind of just like show me how they do stuff mm -hmm. and I'll help them out you know yeah because it's a huge business with a zillion details yeah. right that you have to like yeah, there's aware. a lot yeah. of stuff that goes into throwing a show yeah did yeah. you like it I love it honestly yeah. I started doing it up here actually when did I moved you? up here yep but you can't do it now because of the, sh the store, right? Um, I mean, I find time do still. You? Yeah. Good. I actually did one at McNeil's Brewery about two weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably good to get your hand back in, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. What attracted you to doing a business, doing retail? Um, I mean, that's something that I've always wanted to do. I kind of, mm -hmm. when I was going through middle and high school, I kind of just was drawn towards being my own boss and not really having to answer to anybody except myself. Mm -hmm. um, that was like a major part of it for mm -hmm. me, I guess. Um, and I've always kind of wanted to put my own twist on certain businesses. You know, I, I would walk into like a skateboarding store and I'd be like, well, why isn't there art in here? Or, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like putting multiple elements into one place is kind of what I've always wanted to do. Right. For those of us in the community and those of us older people in the community, yeah. we are we are becoming aware, but I think we've got a long way to go in understanding the skateboarding community. Yeah. And I think walking into the void, you get a real sense of that. Yeah. Um, first of all, there are a lot of skateboards on the wall, yeah. which are many varied and beautiful, um, yeah. all kinds of different designs. But could you talk a little bit about the skateboard culture? Yeah, so that was like another big point for me in really pushing getting a solid place that had what people really, really wanted and needed in, mm -hmm. the, t in the area. Um, I got acquainted with a couple people in town and I noticed that there was a really big demand for it. Just nobody was really doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard of like other stores doing it in the past, but they kind of just dwindled away with it. They weren't really as interested. They kind of picked up other things. Um, and to me, skateboarding was a huge outlet when I was a kid. It was like yeah. an escape from reality for me. You know, it really helped me a lot. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm very, very much about supporting local businesses and support your friends and what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of going to the big corporation companies, support the smaller guy and, you know, build something together. And that's that's kind of why I really, really wanted to push for it. Yeah, for many people, there's um, 
you know, there's an image of skateboarders, in mm -hmm. or not just in town, but in general. I know I saw a great, um, I think it was a great meme, actually, of um, uh, a little old lady saying, you know, we need to get kids outside more. They're just in front of their screens all day, and then the, the picture below it is a bunch of kids sitting on, sitting on a stoop with their skateboards in hand yeah. with no place to go. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I think that we have, uh, I, th I think that there's a, such a big difference between um, between labeling and defining, yep. you know, who, who we are in the community. Yep. And I wonder if you could speak a little more to that. Yeah, I mean, stereotypes are there for a reason, you know. Um, people have kind of viewed skateboarding as an outcast type sport for a long time. It wasn't even really considered a sport for a long time. Um, it was, you know, it, it just wasn't a really mm -hmm. positive thing that was viewed in society, and it still isn't to a lot of people, but what I've noticed through my traveling is that it is becoming accepted, and more and more skate parks and stuff are being brought into our culture. Like I said, the stereotype is there for a reason. There are people that kind of put that image out there um, in a negative light, mm -hmm. but you know, you could say that about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and for me personally, like I said, it was nothing but a positive for me. I met a lot of friends, um, a lot of really good people that were very, very creative and helped me, you know, even with music. It's one of those things where if you're an artist, odds are you like skateboarding. And if you're a skateboarder, odds are you like music and art. And it's all these like interchangeable things right. that kind of ultimately bring people together. And you know, I kind of like that. It was you're kind of seen as an outcast for mm -hmm. skateboarding because mm -hmm. it wasn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it took like a certain mindset or a certain type of person to really understand what you were doing. Yeah, you know? and you had your own community. Yeah. 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 So when you came to Brattleboro, was there much of a skateboard community? There is. It's just it's very it's very underground. Still, it's mm -hmm. like one of the you know. I keep saying through my travels what I've experienced and seen. It's it's one of the places that it's like you're almost like an outlaw for skateboarding. It's mm -hmm. kind of interesting to me to see that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I don't. I really feel like it shouldn't be like that at all because yeah. it it helps people. You know, it really mm -hmm. does. It's a really good outlet. It's a creative outlet. Yes, and also um, having it be part of the community. I know, like for instance, in Burlington, yeah. you know, it's part of the lakefront there. You yeah. know, and they've created that to also um, to be part of the community, yeah. uh, so that many people can take part of it because the walking path is right there along the way as mm -hmm. well. And we actually have an indoor skate skateboard rink, right? So our skateboard. Park. Park. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yep. There's actually a couple. There's a boys and girls club, and yes. then. Um, our good friend Rocky, he's the owner of this company called BUI. Uh -huh. He has like a DIY park that he set up with a bunch of friends. And that is that to me is like the core of the skateboarding community right uh -huh. there. That's where a lot of people come and they travel to. And you know, he does contests and stuff. He's mm -hmm. very, very much a, a part of the snowboarding scene too. He goes up to Mount Snow a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, just going there, if you if I feel like if certain people from the town just went there on an right. open skate night that he does on Thursday, they would really see that it really is a force in our town yes. because kids come from all over the place just to go in his little park. That's you know? so great. What's yeah. the name of it? It's uh, BUI. BUI, and yeah. it's at the the Whetstone um, Art Center there? I believe that's the name of it. It's on William Street? Yes, at the bottom of William Street. Even if you just watch skateboarding videos, mm -hmm. it's a whole other world. Yeah. And it has an incredible amount of people who are so talented at it and doing crazy, wild things. Yeah. I think that there was some lobbying for it to become an Olympic sport, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be in the Olympics soon. Oh, that'd be great. Is what the rumor is. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there's so much artistry that goes into it. Yeah. And prowess. Yeah. yeah. They do some scary things. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> do you go down? Do you skate there? Uh, to, at or BUI? do you board there? What's, it, what's the expression? Uh, ride. Ride? Do you yeah. ride? Yeah. Do you ride there? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Um, I personally can't skateboard the way I once did just because I've had quite the amount of injuries over the years. Like by the time I was, I want to say by the time I was like 18, I had broken my feet and my ankles a couple times mm -hmm. pretty bad. Mm -hmm. and 
me being the young kid I was, I hated going to hospitals and getting the care that I needed and I probably should have. Yep. Um, and music just kind of took over my mm -hmm. life for so long. Mm -hmm. I was so focused on that, mm -hmm. that it was always there. It was always a part of me and it always will be, but it just wasn't as frequent in my life. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. When I moved up here, um, I kind of just walked around the town and went into all the different stores I could. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I kind of just took little mental notes as I was in these stores. Um, and I was thinking, oh, well, they have this, why don't they have that, mm -hmm. you know? And as, as I went through the town, I noticed that, you know, there was a lack of certain things. Um, and maybe I just noticed it and they didn't, but, you know, even something as simple as like shoes, you know what I mean? Like skateboarding shoes, where are these kids that are buying these skateboards getting their clothes for it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that kind of like really stuck out to me and that just progressed into what we've become now essentially and what we're building to. Yeah, so did you start out mainly as a skateboarding store? No, um, Allie, she had, it was mainly a head shop when, when I first move up, moved up here. Mm -hmm. um, she did piercing still. Um, it this, was, excuse me, this is your, the, your co-partner. Yes. Your co-business yep. partner. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she was mainly just like the typical head shop. You know, she had the, the smoking accessories, um, vaping stuff, all that, and she had the piercing in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and then she had a couple skateboards, like she had some local artist design a board for her, but um, it wasn't really like a place that you could go set up an entire board, mm -hmm. you know. You and Allie uh, establishing the void and needing a larger area to do it in. Um, mm -hmm. You did you have a, a business model that you ha both had in mind or that you agreed on? Um, there wasn't really like a business model that we sat down and wrote out. We just we we just fed off of each other and our ideas, and mm -hmm. you know we really thought about what our age group needed and what we felt would be beneficial to the community, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and the move was kind of a leap for us, you know. We were, it's, it was really interesting to see how much our business picked up when we moved 100 feet up the road as opposed to where we were. Uh -huh. um, and how many different people started coming in after legalization and stuff. We noticed a different, like an influx in an older age group that mm -hmm. was coming in. Mm -hmm. um, which was great because we got to educate them and it was really cool to see that. Um, and the skateboarding thing, I got to expand on that. I got, you know, to get shoes in and stuff like that, yeah. like stuff that we felt like would really, really be helpful, you know? Yeah. Um, so people don't have to travel very far to get what they need. Yeah. One thing we've like really prided ourselves in mm -hmm. since we started this whole thing was um, basically just accepting everybody that comes into our store. Mm -hmm. um, and we've noticed that, you know, you get like the, the suited up Wall Street type person coming in mm -hmm. to homeless people that come in and mm -hmm. they just want to, you know, check it out and see what's going on. So we like, we really try to give people a safe space to go to. Yeah. You know? And welcoming yeah. us too. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're there to answer their questions or to even just to have conversation, yeah. I would Absolutely. guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that part is pretty great, right? Yeah. Yeah, seeing how many different people. And that, that really ties into a sense of community to me personally mm -hmm. is, you know, you don't just judge somebody by what they're wearing or where they where you see them in life. It's, you know, everybody's welcome in our store. That's, that's great. That's what we try to really yeah. push. Yeah. That's you also had um, uh, a lot of connection and communication with the other people in the, in the community in, in town. Yeah. Rocky, who was doing um, the park. Yep. and uh, you and Allie, and also working more as a team together? Yeah, um, you know, that's a huge thing for me personally, mm -hmm. is kind of like teaming up with people and hearing what they want, even if it's just a customer or a friend. You know, you kind of, when you're, when you're a business owner, you kind of like listen to what people are saying a lot more and what the, you know, you notice that, right. oh, I went to this store, and normally you wouldn't really think of it, but when you're involved in something like that, you tend to, hone in on it a little more, mm -hmm. and you kind of take mental notes as, yes. you know, oh, okay, so maybe this would work. I didn't even think of that, you know? Right, right. Yeah. And have you found that, um, because not everybody does that, and so to um, to observe in that kind of way, did it, do you think it really strengthened the business? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, 
yeah. and working together. Yeah, getting yeah. getting a good group of people, like a core group of people, um, has been great. You know, we kind of we have a couple other business partners that we have, and they hmm. have been doing. They've been involved in business for over 50 years collectively, mm. you know, and mm -hmm. it's one of those things that having somebody with experience is great because there's certain things that we just don't know. We just don't understand how it works. Um, and they kind of take care of that, and we just have our role, which is great. It's really nice not to have that whole weight on you all the time. So you mean like people who are helping with accounting yeah, or yep. different things in yep, the business? Like, like taxes, like that. accounting, uh -huh. all yep. that stuff. In your business, you're actually really kind of a collective. Yeah. You know, you meet people and you get acquainted with them and mm -hmm. then you find out, oh, I have this business idea or I, you mm -hmm. know, I have this or that and you kind of, you just feed off of each other, which is great. I mm -hmm. love it. It keeps the motivation going for me personally, at yeah. least, you know, yes. hearing a young person come into my store and say that they, they didn't have the outlet or the, the means to put it in a store, like their idea. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a place to do that, and now they do, even if it's just their artwork. Um, right. That's really inspiring to me, and that makes me feel like I'm doing something right for the community. Yeah, yeah. Have you, um, have you started being part of Art Walk on Gallery Walk? Uh, Gallery Walk, we are and we aren't. It's one of those things that yeah. we're, I mean, we're, you can't really miss us anymore on Main Street. Right, right. You know? um, but I don't really know if we're on the list yeah. for all of that. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, it's another venue, you know, mm -hmm. with people walking down Main Street. And I'm yeah. sure the art that you're going to have is different from a lot of the art in town. Yeah. 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 When you first got here to Brattleboro and, you know, when you were looking around, um, how was it in terms of being um, a young adult person? Mm -hmm. trying to find a place to live, a place to work, um, livelihood, and that kind of thing? Um, in my perspective, it was, it was pretty easy, but maybe I got lucky just because I knew someone that mm -hmm. kind of took me under her wing and just gave me a safe place to be mm -hmm. and a job on top of it. I know jobs are very hard to find um, in general. Yeah. Um, but as far as like coming from a place like Connecticut where the cost of living is so high, it's kind of outrageous. You know, you, you get a studio apartment for $1,000 a month, it's kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Where up here, it's a little more flexible, people are willing to work with you a little more. Mm -hmm. Kids who are in that, that sort of um, 20 to 40 year old range, you know, I guess now it's, it's about a 20 year range. Yeah. Um, but I think that there has been a general feeling in town that they've been underserved in various yeah. ways. We have a lot of a lot of people coming back to the farms or starting their own farms. Um, but for you to have a, a presence on Main Street and to be having um, a successful retail business, yeah. um, how do you how do you see that uh, in terms of drawing kit, drawing people to the area? Um, you know, like I said previously, there was. <clears throat> there wasn't really a niche for younger kids around mm -hmm. here is what I noticed. There's not really too many young people stores around here. It's right. a lot of, it's drawn towards the older community, which mm -hmm. there's no problem with that at all, but you're kind of skipping over a whole generation of kids that is either going to stay here and make something of it, or they're just going to move on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was like a, once again, that was like a huge thing for me as I walked around and I was like, you know, there's so much potential in this town to like really do something cool. And most of the people here are very, very supportive of each other, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, like I do a show once a year for the shop. It's in April. Um, and I kind of took the reins last year for the first time on it and it did really, really well. And it was just my first year doing it. And I basically threw a bunch of my friends' bands on it and a bunch of local bands. and. It did really well, and people were very supportive, and they stayed the whole time. This is a music show that you yep. did, and where did you do it? Uh, I was at the Stone Church. At the Stone Church, yep. yes. And Robin was nice enough to, you know, kind of let me do my thing and do a full day event out of that's it. That's great. So, yeah, and that's yeah. Robert Robin Johnson yep. at the Stone Church. Yeah, yep. that's a beautiful venue. It is. Yeah. Yeah, he's put a lot of work into that, yes. and that's that's one of the many gems that this town has that's to right. offer. It's just, you know. Well, I think again, you know, I know that he talked about. Um, because uh, he's he's really just starting out. I mean, it's yeah. all. I think it's been a couple years now. Yeah. But he said so many people were coming from out of town. He was mm -hmm. drawing a lot from Northampton and yeah. Miller's Falls area and that and that kind of thing. But um, 
to get that word out locally, yeah. you know, is a really big deal too. Yeah, that's, that's another great. great thing I love about this area too is, you know, through my travels and being a musician, everything is done on social media now for the most part. Right, right. There's not really towns that you can give somebody a physical flyer and they put it on their fridge and they hold on to it. So that's kind of like a lost art. And I, I love that, you know. Yes. So you're seeing that in Brattleboro. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of the last places that like if I do a show, I can print out 50 flyers, and I know that all of those flyers are being dispersed amongst the town, and people are actually paying attention to That's them. That's right. And almost every venue in town has some kind of a board like that. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You don't I didn't really know, see that much at all anymore. I didn't know that was unique. Yeah. We're still small enough so we can get away with it. Yeah, huh? definitely. In addition to um, all of the things that you have for sale, all of your retail items, yep. you also have some services. Um, uh, and the body piercing is one of them, and then soon to be cosmetic uh, tattooing. Can yep. you talk about those a little? Yeah. Um, so those have actually been, the piercing element has been there since um, the, sh the store opened. Mm -hmm. um, and Allie's been doing that for about nine years now. Right. Um, so she's really good. She's very, very thorough with mm -hmm. everything that she does. She, she gives a really good experience to people, which is I think is really awesome because... You know, I've been to a bunch of tattoo and piercing studios in my life, and certain people kind of just, like, shove you off. They don't really give you the information that, or they don't really answer your questions. Mm -hmm. And Allie is there to answer anything and everything you have, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And she's very efficient. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very efficient. Well, she's not going to be doing the cosmetic tattooing. Someone else is. Yeah. So you're going to bring someone in to do that? Yeah, her name's Adrian. Um and she was just the customer at first. She's into the skateboarding and snowboarding thing. Uh -huh. She kind of came in, and we all became acquainted. She's friends with Rocky. It's just one of those things where it's like yeah. this big circle, and you meet people, and she was one of those people we met, and we just got to talking, and she was like, oh, yeah, I do cosmetic tattooing. And me and Allie kind of looked at each other. We were like, that could be a really cool thing to bring in, into this shop because... There's nothing like that here, you know? So. No, there's not anything like that. Yeah. And I know um, years ago I was looking for someone to do that because I had a friend who yeah. did that. And people people don't know really um, much about cosmetic tattooing, mm -hmm. and it sounds kind of scary. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it can be kind of scary. Yeah. But you can have eyeliner yeah. put on yeah. um, that's permanent mm -hmm. and blush and lips. Yeah. I don't know what else. Oh, eyebrows? Eyebrows, right, yeah, that's a big thing. one. And for someone who has been trained in doing this, yeah. it's I, I've seen impeccable work. Yeah. It's really quite amazing. Yeah. So that's another really exciting service. Yeah, it is, definitely. Yeah. And um, you'll be doing that in the shop? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be full service. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's kind of like what our goal is, yeah. is just to adhere to most people's needs. I'm not going to yeah. say everybody, but, you know. The younger generation, there is this void that needs to be filled, especially around here. And mm -hmm. you know, if we can do that, that's great. Oh, I know. I think it's wonderful. You know, and there aren't that many places in town. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, if you had, because you're, you're now you're deep in downtown, yeah. um, do you have to pay parking, or do you live close enough to get there? Uh, yeah, I live in town. You um, do. Usually we park behind the shop. There's uh, oh, parking nice. near the train tracks yeah, there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're I was just wondering if you, if you if you had to get a, a ticket for the parking garage to be no, a member. Not no, that's good. Luckily, that's good. Yeah. So you're steeped in downtown yeah. and you're getting to know um, you know your neighbors yeah. and what it's like to be downtown business and all of that. Do you have a, have you are you starting to form a, a vision of what you'd like to see? I still walk around this town. I just think like there's so much potential here. It's such a beautiful little place, you know. Um, and it's the first exit in Vermont, you right. know. So it's, it really could be a very, very big tourist destination for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for me personally, I just want to see, you know, things like skateboarding and music and art just, like, pushed out more, mm -hmm. you know, and supported a little more. There, there definitely is support, mm -hmm. um, but... I feel like that's there. This area is like a mecca for artists and musicians. You know, I, yeah. I've met people in bands that I worship. You know, from here, and I didn't mm -hmm. even know they lived here. You mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's very cool how there's like this little hub, in this community of people that just you know, oh yeah, I draw. I'm a tattooer. You know, I do this. I do that. It's very very cool to see. Yeah. So I I kind of have a vision of it, but, um, 
you know, I feel like it's just going to take a lot of time to get to that point. And change is like a big thing. And some people don't like change, per se. You know? Yeah, well, things, things are going to change no matter what, yeah. right? But um, I think having, you know, a strong center, um, yeah. you know, like your business thrive, you're thriving now, you yeah. know. And as you said, you know, just moving, you know, 100 feet up the road yeah. made a, a really big difference. Yeah. Um, but I think your point is well taken that uh, Brattleboro is the first exit. Mm -hmm. in Vermont, um, and to be able to um, have people come here and know that they are going to be served in different ways. Yeah. You know, not only will they be fed and clothed and sheltered in some way, yeah. but there will be interesting things to see and to do. And yeah, I think a, a big part of that too is kind of um, giving a rebirth to the nightlife around here. I feel like that would be a really good, crucial thing to have is places to eat after 8 o'clock at yes. night or, you know eat and drink. Yes, yeah. again, I think uh, that's a really important point because mm -hmm. the town really does pretty much shut down around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, yeah. no matter what day of the week it is. Yeah. So to be able to keep it alive, and I think this, uh, Robin at the Stone Church is yeah. doing a lot to promote that. Yeah. And um, again, I think it, it is a younger group of people that yeah. we're looking for. Yeah. If you can draw more people in that way, and also um, I'm assuming that you and Rocky and the rest of your cohort as well is doing a lot on social media, yeah, bringing more absolutely. people to the area. That, that is, a, it's a very important thing to be involved with social media, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're doing events, I've noticed. Right. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's, a, it's very, very necessary because mm -hmm. um, that's how you draw the people from Northampton and other surrounding right. states because right. we are a small community, you know. Um, so getting other people in, in this town and seeing how we do stuff is mm -hmm. really, really important. And that's the best way to do it is getting involved with other events out of state and letting people know that you're there. You right. Know? And getting to know more and more people who yep. are involved in the same things that you are. Yep. I mean, all of that is very obvious. But um, again, I think that uh, it's, it's having the things that people want to come in mm -hmm. particularly for. Yep. So the, it's a great balance between the social media and postering around yep. town, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, Nikki, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for being on the show. Thanks to all of you for tuning in today and finding out more about downtown Brattleboro. And um, we will see you again next week. <laughs> <laughs>